Indian philosophy had its origin in an oral tradition. By 1500 BCE, the first philosophy was written in the form of poetry and hymns. The four written Vedas are the Rig Veda, the Samveda, the Yajurveda, and the Artha Veda. There are some auxiliary texts and the reflective Upanishads, of which there are 108. The orthodox schools discussed here are those that accept the Vedas and the heterodox school of Jainism, which does not. Freedom is the ultimate value in all schools of thought and is tied to self-knowledge. These schools differ in their claims of ontology, what exists, and how one has access to this freedom. Kannada has six positive categories of existence. Substance, quality, action, the universal, the ultimate differentiator, and relation of inheritance. Inherent. Substance has nine categories, earth, water, fire, air, have atoms that are eternal but the compounds are not. Akasha is a substratum of sound. Space and time are eternal and each of these categories is a unity. Self and mind are eternal but are many. All substances possess quality, but not all substances possess action. By relation of inherence, all substances possess qualities. So the qualities are prior to action, because not all substances possess action. Universals inherit in all substance, quality, and action. For example, a pot is made of red clay. Red is the quality of the substance that inheres in the color, and red in this particular object. The pot does not possess action or karma. The universals refer to all and can be said of a substance, a quality, or an action. The ultimate differentiator is also an ontological category and inheres only in an eternal substances and make each distinct. Nyaya also has categories for means of knowing. This system was dedicated to valid forms of argumentation. Here are 16 types of knowing. The soul and body have qualities, and freedom is the correct knowledge of the categories which distinguishes between self and not self. Tradition claims the founder of the Samkhya is Kapila. He claims knowledge is the highest end for which one strives. The concern, therefore, is to discover the ultimate reality and the role of the human person in it. The claim is there are two eternal realities. One is material and one is spiritual. The material reality is the primary cause of being and has the qualities of lightness, darkness, and activity. The proofs for this that are given are if there is no effect in the cause, no means can produce that effect. Connection between cause and effect is invariable and each is manifested by the material it is made of. Everything cannot be produced from everything. A cause produces only the effect it has the capacity for. The effect is not different than the material cause. 
The proofs given for spiritual reality are material serves the purposes of consciousness. Consciousness must be different than qualities of the material, pain, pleasure, or delusion. All knowledge presupposes the existence of self. Material needs a sentient consciousness to experience it. Consciousness tries to escape pain, pleasure, and delusion, and so must be other than these material qualities. From material rea reality, there are principles that evolve, both physical and psychological. Knowledge and experience are explained from a complex of intellect, ego, and mind called mahat, which is affected by objects. The modification of the material complex is called vritti, which can receive consciousness from the spiritual reality and thereby make the in intellect intelligent and conscious. This gives rise to the sense of individuality. The mahat gives rise to the sense organs of knowledge, vision, smell, taste, sound, and touch. There are five sense organs of action, speech, hand movement, foot movement, reproduction, and excretion. The evolution of material reality is to serve the purpose of each individual soul or purusha. Material reality will stop only when the soul has achieved liberation. Liberation can occur when the soul attains insight into the difference between spiritual and material reality. All states of suffering are a consequence of confusing material with spiritual reality. Kapila states, we are like gods who forget the heights from which we came, so intent we are on the joys and sorrows of earthly life. Yoga, likewise, claims there are two realities. Yoga maintains a set of practices in order to transform the body so it can discern the difference between material and spiritual reality. Therefore, there are actions that lead to liberation and are described by this eightfold path. Nonviolence, truth, non-stealing, self-control, non-greed, cleanliness, contentment, and meditation. The main thesis of Advaita Vedanta is reality is one in nature, without difference or parts. The world thus is the same thing as Brahman and does not exist apart from it. The nature of Brahman is consciousness, but this is a figurative term only, for the one is unqualified, devoid of any attributes, and is indescribable. Other passages in Upanishads describe Brahman as the supreme being, the efficient cause of the universe. Thus, the first cause of Advaita Vedanta must be contrasted with the material first cause described by the philosophies of Samkhya and Vyashasika. Jain philosophy denies the authority of the Vedas and for this reason is called heterodox. The oldest texts date from the 3rd and 2nd centuries BCE. There are six categories in the Jain ontology. Soul is sentient and non-material. Matter is non-sentient and material. Space, time, motion and rest are neither sentient nor material. In Jainism, soul has infinite knowledge, 
but is bound to the cycle of rebirths because of the subtle particles of matter called karma that embed themselves within the soul. While the soul has neither beginning nor end in time, it does take on the shape of the body it occupies. The goal is to purify the soul of karmic matter. The Jains reject the view that reality is either permanent or impermanent, but rather the Jains claim it is both origination, cessation, and persistence that constitutes reality. The soul can rid itself of the karma through ascetic practices and obtaining knowledge. The first level of knowledge is derived from empirical observations and linguistic concepts. The next stage is characterized by clairvoyance and telepathy, and the last stage with the soul completely freed from its karma is a perfect knowledge and omniscience. The main ethical principle is called ahimsa, which is translated as a compassion for all living things.